Hallelujah. But I have something burning in me. And Pastor Lisa knew it. First of all, before I get into my, what he gave me, the other night I was somewhere not spiritual at all. I was downtown at Savannah Theater where it talked about three men and a piano playing the piano. Just wonderful time. But all at once, the Lord began to speak to me, and he said, tell them that I said to stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Well, immediately I look at myself as well, and I thought but did not say, stop what? He said, stop making decisions without consulting me. Stop with wrong attitudes. Stop with the bitterness. Stop saying things that should not be said. And there was other things I knew that I could go on and on, but those were some of the major things that he said. He said, I said the tongue is the pen of a ready writer, and that is true. He said, but I said out of the heart flow the issues of life. And when my people let strife, bitterness, resentment, attitudes that they should not have be in their heart, then what flows out of the heart is issues of life, which means that bitterness flows out of their life, which means the curse flows out of their life. And he said, when that curse flows out of their heart into their life, he said, it'll be a curse. It'll be a curse that you cannot tell it where to go and you cannot tell it when to end. He said, and a curse always goes to the spot that is the dearest to you. And he said, a curse that is self-inflicted is harder, harder to have authority of and to control. He said, because you, you, God, give me the right wording. You spoke it in. You had it in your heart. It's a self-inflicted curse. And self-inflicted curses take strong repentance and take strong crying to be able to change the outcome. Well, when he did that, I mean, immediately you should always look in your own self first. And so Tuesday night here at prayer, that's exactly what we all did. We had a time of just, you know, opening ourselves up to the Lord, what needs to be changed. You know what I'm saying. Tell us, show us we want our hearts right. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. How many knows that we're in a war zone? You know, people get all shook up on events. Folks, you're in a war zone. Are, are you following me? And all you have to do is go back to the early church to realize this is nothing compared to what the early church went through. This is nothing what's happening in other countries where people are being beheaded for believing in Christ. So get over it. And let's move forward. Amen. Well, I, I, how many of you are going through some things in life? How many there's some avenues in your life that you need victory and you need it now? Well, I found myself in that, and I was praying and seeking God, and I'm one of these. I remember what he told me when I first dedicated my life to him. I'm just going to be sharing a lot tonight. I remember he said, Dave, always spend a little bit more time in my presence worshiping me than you do even the word. But we should do both. He said, because as long as you'll spend time worshiping me, even when you come to an area of the word that you do not understand, he said, I can lead you and I can guide you. You'll have a spiritual sensitivity to my spirit even when you're studying the word. So I've always known to keep pretty much of a balance. So I was praying about the situations that I had in my life, and then God began to direct me to the word, and I'm so excited. Sometimes people just pray, but they don't go to the word for the answer. And you, 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 God gives you the wisdom out of the word. So are you ready? Yes. Well, go with me if you've got your Bible. If not, I'm just going to do, do it myself. 1 Samuel chapter 17. How many know the story about David and Goliath? Every little kid about four years old know that. But I'm going to go back over it in 1 Samuel 17 too. And Saul and the men of Israel gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them, only 
a valley between them. And there went out a champion. How many feel like your situation is a biggie? See, but people say, well, you know, like the children of Israel, you know, they thought of themselves as grasshoppers. How many of you realize that you really are the grasshopper? <laughs> that what you're facing is a biggie? See, to me, I couldn't deny that this was a biggie. Are y'all, I couldn't I can say that. I said, God, this is a Goliath. And then he said, well, who are you? I said, oh, yes, I'm David. <laughs> I like how God deals with me. Listen, and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span, told me the size of the helmet, told me all the, uh, the size of the coat, the weight of the coat, and all that kind of stuff. Told me what he had on his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. Told me about his spear, all this kind of stuff. But here's number eight. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine? And ye are servants of Saul. Well, we missed it. They were not just servants of Saul. They were servants of the Most High God. And then he said, see, he's wanting to call the shots. Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. And if he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall you be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel to say, give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all of Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. If you have gone through something that your first response is dismayed or even afraid, it doesn't matter. You're still going to win. I say it this way. Inside, anytime you have a battle, you're going to have lying accusations that are going to be flung at you from the enemy. Don't get all upset about them. They're just lies. To cause you to be intimidated, confused, to strike fear inside of you. But don't forget who you belong to. The constant threats of Goliath begin to mentally bombard them. Listen to me what it says in verse 12. Now David was a son of Ephrodite of Bethlehem of Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons. And the men went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. Then he says, and the three elder sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to battle, we don't really give a flip, do we? I really don't because they didn't do anything. They just went to battle. Don't put my name and say she just went to battle. If I didn't do anything, I don't give a flip about being in the battle. Are you listening to me? I thought to myself, what a disgrace that their name is mentioned there. I want to remember the names when I get to heaven. I said, oh, you're the one that just went to battle? You know, these things are being recorded about you and I. Have you ever thought about it like that? I did. I thought to myself, I don't ever want it to be written about me. And Dathan went to the battle. I mean, they didn't pick up anything. They didn't say anything. They didn't do anything. They were just bodies there. Well, some of you are doing the same thing in the midst of your battle. You're right there with it, but you're not doing anything. And don't be surprised if you're not getting results. See, you get sweet Lisa on Sunday. You got me now. Sweet time is over. <laughs> Listen, and Jesse said unto David his son. Now, you have to know the history of David. David couldn't even eat at the table with them. David was considered an outcast. Jesse really didn't believe that David was his son. How would you like that kind of bring? Well, my mama didn't like me. Well, she might have reason not to like you. Just get right with God and let God love on you. Amen. At this one minute, I have to say this. Him and his sister came and talked to me one time. And he was talking about, you know, my mother loved on my sister. And he said, I never even got to sit in my mama's lap. I'm serious. And I said, how old are you? And he, he was in his 30s. I said, my God, man, get over it. <laughs> I'm serious. He was nursing the fact he never sat in his mother's lap. And I looked at her. She said, yes, he did. I said, oh, mister, grow up. Your mama don't want you sitting in her lap now. So you might as well get over it and move on. 
See, that's the sweet one. Okay, listen. Take now thy brethren and eat from this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to the brethren. He gives him what is not really going to help him win. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now Saul and they, and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning, and left the sheep of the keeper, and took it when his Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench, as the host was going forth to the fight, and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, evidently they weren't fighting because he's able to talk with them. There came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. Have you realized when the devil says something to you, it's the same words over and over again. Because you paid attention to him to the first time. He knows you'll continue paying attention to him till you get a hold of it and call him a lying dog. Amen. Listen. And the, all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel as he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. She must have looked good. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this villain's son? And taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God. I don't care what situation you're in, who are they or who is that to defy you? You're a child of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't care how big they are. I don't care what power they have. You belong to God Almighty. Amen. And I don't care if you have to look up or whatever you have to do. The higher you look up, the more they're going to fall down. You're going to see God in a greater way. If it's a big problem, you're going to see God in a greater way than you've ever seen him before. Hallelujah. Listen, and the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be to the, done to the man that killeth them. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left these few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, but thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Folks, sometimes your best friend don't even stand with you, but big deal. you got the armies of God all around you. You are, come on, encamped around. A, the heavenly host is camped around you. You belong to God. God will get them right. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from toward another and spake in the same manner. And the people answered him again, saying the same thing. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for them. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, They're not able to, You're not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you're just a youth, and he's a man of war from his youth. The devil always makes you feel inadequate, but he's a liar. And David said to Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. What you've gone through in the past has prepared you for this one. Amen. Hallelujah. The battle might be bigger, but the victory will be bigger too. And I went after him, and I smote him and delivered him out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Yeah, David. <laughs> Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and this uncircumcised, which means this man without a covenant shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. Turn to your neighbor and say, when you fight me, you're fighting God. <laughs> Hallelujah. How now look down and say, hey, devil, when you fight me, you're fighting God. 
Hallelujah. I love this. And David said, Mara, listen, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion, out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with you. And that's the only way he's going to go. Then Saul tried to put all kind of things on him, and David took him off. Verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five, underline that or remember that, five smooth stones out of the brook and put him in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew nigh the Philistine. Five stones. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and a ruddy and a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog? Yes, you are. <laughs> See, he even recognized what he is. Devil would tell on himself. Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his God. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day, say this day. This day. Say it again. Tonight is life-changing day for you. Turn to your neighbor and say, tonight's the night. Everything changes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight's the night. Tonight's the night. It's going to happen in the spirit realm and you'll see it in the natural. Tonight's the night. Tonight's the night. Tonight's the night. Yeah. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I'll smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I'll give your carcass to the beast of the Philist to the host of the Philistines. This day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword or with the spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Come on now. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David ran to him. I like that. Ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag, took thence a stone and, and slung it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to, with the ground. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and he smote the Philistine, and he slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took the Philistine's sword, drew it out of the sheath thereof, and slew him and cut off his head. And the Philistines saw that their champion was dead. Are you listening to me? Now I can read a whole bunch more. But let me tell you what I did. Do you have my rocks right there? You want me to tell you what I did? There were five arena. I thought the devil's got a plan, and there are five parts of that. Number one, that's the biggie. I put a name on it. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. David had five because not only was he coming against Goliath, but Goliath had four brothers. Are you listening to me? And David was prepared, or listen to me, prepared to annihilate all of them. I want you to get, we got a bucket here. I want you to come and get you five stones. One. She says you can only have one. You have to go get your other four. <clears throat> You go get them and do like I did. Take a magic marker, put a name or put a thing on there, and I have it everywhere I go. I say, God, by the power of the blood of Jesus, I destroy every one of them. I make them bow to the name of Jesus. I make them bow to the plan of God. And I'm telling you what, faith has ignited on the inside of me. 
I'm one of these, I gotta see something. This is what I see. This is what I see. This is what I see. Tonight, I want you to walk. You got your heart right, your attitude right. Now, I want you to take stuff, five stones, and I want you to be prepared to win in life. What? You get only one from her. She's cheap at this moment. She had to go out and gather the stones. <laughs> so get your own. Get your other than one. You got to leave here with one. You got to leave here with one. Are you listening to me? I want you to have a visual of having victory in your life. I want you to be so on the inside of you. I don't care how many, you know, you can have a, a, a five at home, five in your car, five in your purse. I don't care. But they have the same name on them and start saying, I have victory in my life. No demon is more powerful than me. Because I'm bought by the blood of the Lamb. I have the name of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, and the word of my testimony. Look out, devil, don't mess with me anymore. Don't you dare mess with me. You forgot who I was. I know who I am. I know who I belong to. And I make you bow to the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If they defy you, they defy the living God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God forever. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, while it's here, come on up here. Won't you just sort of lay them out like that? Just empty that bucket right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember, she only said one. But I know where you can get more. When God gave me this, I went out at midnight with my flashlight. I know I got stoned somewhere in this yard. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Lamb of God. Yes, see, that's what I want. All right, play some. Go ahead, honey. Go ahead, baby. Never stop the child. Go. Go.